Hello, this is Tolo from Trifold Productions with another Blender quick tip. I don't know why that's still a tongue twister for me, but uh, in this quick tip, I'm going to introduce you to something that I just found out. This is probably maybe a week or two ago. That Blender comes with its own camera rig. This is for Blender 2.8 and 2.79. I don't know about the older versions, like 2.49 and, and older. But I know for 2.79, 2.8, the camera rig has already been installed in the add-on section. So in order for you to see it in Blender, go to Edit, Preferences, and here you're going to click or type in Camera, and you'll see Camera Rigs. Add Camera Rigs, turn around Camera, that's not what we're looking at or looking for, but Camera, Add-on, Camera Rigs. And in Blender 2.79, you just go to File. You know the old way of doing the file. User preferences should be somewhere in here, and it's the same process. And once you've done that, you're going to press Shift A, and you're going to go down in the pop-up menu. Go down to Camera, and click on Dolly Camera Rig or Crane Camera Rig. In you know real in actual life, Dolly and Camera are Dolly and crane do two different things this one is more of a higher camera angle and the dolly is more along the line of a rail system that follows the object uh, either way in virtual reality these pr pretty much both work the same but let's just focus on the uh, dolly camera rigs. let's click on that and then this comes up let's left click for me in blender I, i've changed the selection from the right mouse button to the left because that's how a lot of software online actually is. You left click to choose something. So I've changed mine to left click. But if you're still right clicking, just right click or left click on this camera here because this is not what we're going to use. We're using the camera rig that was the add on. So left click on that. Let's press delete. And let's press delete. And that's been taken care of. And then let's click, let's left click on that and then choose our gizmo, directional gizmo here. And we're going to left click and hold on the green, which is the Y directional button and drag that back. And now this is actually pretty cool. What I used to use before when I've done a tutorial on that is so I would uh, have the camera, the default camera and blender, and I would track it to an empty. Only problem with that, I mean, it's useful, very useful. Only problem with it is when I'm in a scene where I have a lot of empties, it's an issue trying to find, find the empty for that particular camera. But with this, you actually use your, um, let me see, what am I thinking about here? The pose mode, because this is an armature, basically. So to activate this or to use it, go up here to object and turn it from object mode to pose mode and then when you click on it it's going to be blue which signifies it shows that it's an object or pose mode now let's look at this scene through a through the camera itself so hover your mouse over the top right corner or anywhere at the top in blender my user face uh, is kind of lagging the screen cast is kind of lagging a little bit but we'll just ignore that left click and drag down once that uh, arrow turns to a plus sign and what we're going to do here we're going to press zero to look, look at our scene through the camera <coughs> excuse me and we're going to manipulate our camera with this camera rig with the, in pose mode so once again go to the directional gizmo over here and click on that come on buddy click on it and then we're going to well, this is really lagging pretty bad. I don't know why it's doing that. But we're going to hover over the Z directional arrow. We're going to pull down. And focus your attention on the view through the camera. We're going to pull up, pull down with the Z. That's up and down. It's pretty cool. And when you choose the directional pad at the bottom of the camera, this moves the whole rig back and forth. So left click on that. And we're going to drag it on the Y axis. And it moves forwards and backwards. Now the gizmo behind the camera itself moves the camera. And because the camera is parented to the gizmo in the front, this is where the focus is going to be all the time. So 
left click on that and, it, and once again focus your attention in the camera view let me scroll up or down on my mouse wheel to zoom out and left click and hold on the Z directional arrow and you've got that up and down movement oh kind of zoomed up too much there okay okay there we go let me see there, there it is pull it down and I'm going to show you how you can really use this effectively to get like some really interesting scenes or camera angles for a scene let's say you have a car, a car chase you want to animate in blender what we're going to do is we're going to parent this rig to our cube here but before we do that I'm going to create a path here that the quote-unquote this cube is going to represent our car I'm going to create a, a path here for the cube to be on. So I'm going to left click. Let me get out of pose mode. Go to object mode. Left click on our cube. And I'm going to pull it up a little bit so it's on the top of the grid as opposed to being in, in the middle of the grid. Okay, so it's on top. So I'm going to press Shift A on my keyboard. And from mesh, I'm going to pick plane. And I'm, I want to extend this plane straight ahead so it looks like a it's supposed to represent a street. And I'm going to use a modifier, a modifier to do that called the array modifier. Click on that. Click on array. And I want the uh, path or the road to be on the y axis. So I'm going to click on that little uh, section, press zero. Oh, sorry. Press circle, zero. Enter. Here, press one. And now it's going to go along the y axis because this is. But we should look at these parameters here. This is X, this is Y, and this is Z. And we want the path or our road to be on the Y axis. And to increase the number of squares going forward, you increase the count. Let's increase this to 10. Enter. Or maybe 20, make it a little bit longer. Enter. So now we have that path going, you know, a bit of ways down. And we're going to click on our camera there go back into pose mode I'm going to pull that back to its original position it's right there press 1 or 3 actually it into the right orthographic view I'm going to click on the gizmo the target gizmo I'm just want to call it just the target gizmo and pull it into the cube um, then I'm going to go back into object mode and I want to parent this cube to the dolly rig and to do that um, left click on your square and then we're going to shift left click on the dolly and from there we're going to press control P and we're going to say parent it to the object and now once we've done that once we move the Everything is, the cube is connected to the dolly. So once we move the dolly, the cube will also follow. Okay, that looks good. And now what we want to do, we're going to drag that back to its original position. We want to have the cube move along the roadway, so to speak, path. Let me apply this, uh, this modifier. And we're going to have this cube follow this path. And to do that, we're going to drag this up so we can see our timeline. And we're going to select our dolly. And we're going to press this little button here, which is the recorder button. What this does is that it automatically records keyframes in Blender. So once you've pressed that, if you, if you don't press that you, and you want to animate something, you're going to have to press I and then have to choose one of these parameters one of these choices here to animate your scene but in order to just avoid the repetition of having to do that time and time again you just click on this little uh, record button so to speak for auto king and and once it's blue that means it's activated in 2.79 i think it turns red but just click on it and it's activated and what we're going to do is just click once <coughs> excuse me once you've done that you'll see this little yellow diamond appear and the collection will turn yellow which means that it's it's been activated in 2.79 you'll just see a yellow line here 
which is kind of strange, but that's how you know it's, it's recording the keyframes. And then we're going to go to the end, 250, by clicking on this little forward button. And it jumps to the end. We're going to drag our parent system to the end of this, the road here, and it automatically keyframes it. So once we go back and press play, it follows it. It follows the, the uh, it is animated. So that's that's good. So let's stop that and go backwards. And from here, this is where it gets pretty intense or somewhat complicated when it comes to animating this cube, quote unquote, car along this path, which is actually our road, so to speak. Now, once you have this selected, the gizmo here, go back up to object, go to pose mode. Once that's done, we're going to start animating it in terms of having it be like a car chase. So let's click the, let's pivot around our scene by holding our middle mouse button and scrolling and moving our, our mouse around, physically moving our mouse around. Left click, and with our first, in our first frame, let's pull up. And let's go forward maybe 40 frames. And to get like an accurate frame position, instead of trying to move this around manually, just go to this section left click in there and type in 40 and it jumps to the 40th frame and once we're here we're going to left click hold down our left mouse button on the X directional arrow and pull to the side and repeat this process go to 80 type in 80 there and we're going to hold down our left mouse button once again over the X axis pull it to this side and then we're going to go to 120. We're going by increments of four. You can go by any increments you want, but I'm just doing this for the sake of this tutorial. We're going to go to 120. And we're going to sc scroll out with our mouse wheel. And we're going to pivot by holding our middle mouse button and moving our mouse around on our desk itself. And we're going to hold, hover over the left or the Y directional arrow, left, bu left mouse button, pull it back. And we're going to go to 160, I believe is the next, the next frame. And we're going to hold down our Z, hold the left mouse button over our Z axis, pull up. The Y axis, left click, hold down, pull forward. Let's go to 200. Type that in. And we're going to scroll out with our middle mouse button, scroll down, or yeah, scroll down, and hover your mouse, or hover your, your mouse over your left on top of the Y axis. Hold down left mouse button and pull back. And then we're going to do the same thing on the Z axis. Hold down left mouse button, pull up. And then let's jump back to our first frame by pressing that. Um, the, the uh, backwards button. Well, let's pull down. Want to, to pull down or see more of a split screen, hover your left mouse button over this little division, this little divider here. Once it turns into a two-way arrow, hold down your left mouse button and just drag down. And let's scroll up to zoom in. We're going to see what we've created with this dolly rig by having to parent it to this cube. Let's press play. And this is just to represent like a car chase you would want to do or someone walking in an intense scene. And that's pretty much that's pretty much it. So it's a cool, pretty cool rig that you can use the dolly rig or the crane rig. And it comes with Blender. You don't have to <coughs> excuse me, you don't have to download it or get it from any other sources within Blender. And all you have to do all you have to do is just just hold down or my daughter just came into the room. <laughs> Sorry about that. All you have to do is uh, record the keyframes using the automatic um, king, auto king, and parent your rig to whatever object you have in your scene, whether it's a person or a car. And then there you go. So yeah, I hope this Blender Quick Tip helped someone out there. And once again, this is for people who are just beginners. Even if you are a novice or a professional at this, this is also for you. 
So once again, this is Tola from Trifle Productions. Appreciate you guys for listening, for signing in, subscribing. And I thank you guys who will subscribe on in the future. Thank you guys and see you on the next one. All right, adios.